I am ticked off, and I mean mad. I just found out that Carolyn and I have high levels of glyphosate in our system, like in the top 5%, or maybe that's the low 5% of people, only 5% of people have glyphosate this high in their system, and this shouldn't be. Carolyn has been trying to lose some weight for, I don't know, a year or more. And post baby, by the way, yes, she told me I could share this with you. She's been struggling to lose that weight. It just hasn't been coming off. And we eat well, we live well, uh, we're pretty active. She had tried multiple different diets as well, besides just the fact that we eat well and exercise well and all that. She had tried several different diets, different things people told her and research she'd done, and it just wasn't working. In doing some research, she found that uh, there are toxins that our bodies can hold on to that sometimes prevent that weight loss. Um, you know, molds, metals, different environmental toxins that, that can be getting in the way. And so she decided to do a test. She found a practitioner that did this broad spectrum test that tested for environmental toxins, mold toxins, other funguses, bacteria, kind of an overall health check from the point of view of like, is your bacterial balance good? Is it, you have the right amount of good bacteria versus bad bacteria? Same with fungal, do you have any overloads on the system? And so this is, this is where this stemmed from. So she did this test in search of trying to solve her challenges uh, with losing a little bit of weight. When we got the test back, the story kind of shifts from that goal, which is still important and she's still working on, to some very surprising news that we found out. And that was that her system had what was considered an extremely high level of glyphosate, even for the average person. And by that, I mean that we're not average in the way we live and eat. We live in an environment that's surrounded by forest. We're not near cornfields, industrial agriculture. We raise all of our own food or the vast majority of it organically here on our homestead. And while sure, we eat out a little bit, we buy a bag of chips here and there, it's minimal, it's less than 20% of our diet. It was perplexing and concerning to find out that she had this high level of glyphosate in her system. And it stressed us out a bit. It's like, well, how, how can this be coming from? We've been working for 20 years to clean up our lifestyle. And one of the things that her doctor told her, maybe is the case, is that her body has a type that holds on to it. Some people's bodies hold on to the glyphosate. So maybe it's from earlier exposure, even though it was high for the average person, out there that's just kind of eating normally, which we certainly used to be, is high even for that, and so maybe her body's holding on to it. Well, one of the things we decided that we could do was that I could take the test. I'm living the exact same lifestyle as she is. We're consuming nearly the same things. So we would look and see, and, and ideally if we find out, okay, I don't really have any or I don't have very much, then maybe that's the case. Her body's just holding on to it and she needs to detox it along with some other things. We got my results back. What we hoped wouldn't be true is true. I also have a high level of glyphosate. How can that be? We live a pretty organic life. I would say better than even the average person that is living an organic life and buying organic food. So we raise all of our meats here on our property. We know where our food is coming from. They're right here. Our beef and our dairy is coming from these animals right here that we're feeding. Our chicken, we are raising on site. Our eggs, we are raising on site. Literally, our meat, our dairy, our eggs are all coming from on site. Now, do we bring in some of their feed? Yes, absolutely. And that's gonna be something to pay attention to and talk about in a few minutes. But even those sources we control pretty well, I'm learning maybe not good enough. 75% of our vegetables we grow right here. We make our own compost. We know what goes into the soil. We grow them, we preserve them, and we consume them right here. What we do buy from the grocery store, usually in the winter time, is almost always organic. Maybe not 100% of the time, but the vast majority of the time, that supplementation to our vegetables is nearly all organic. Most of our fruit comes from here. Probably not 75%, maybe 50%. That's an area that we're developing. 
but it's still a high level. This is very, very surprising and very shocking. Glyphosate is not something that should be in our system in a high level and we don't know where it's coming from. We have worked hard in our life to create an environment that eliminates these toxins, that's healthy for ourselves and for the next generation. We haven't even tested any of the kids, but obviously if Carolyn and I are high in this, then it's affecting other people as well. And it's a real shock to the system. And, and so where is it coming from? Certainly we're not purists. We do go out to eat. We do buy a bag of Fritos once in a while to have with our chili and, and different things like that. So that's possible. But from what we've been told and are learning, our levels are, particularly Carolyn's, are higher even than people that do that regularly. So it, it can't be that. It can't be the 20%. We kind of try to live by the 80-20% rule. You know, the vast majority of what we do, we raise ourselves, we know where it's coming from, we buy it organic, and then we don't worry about the rest because we want to go on with life and have fun and eat at other people's houses and be able to go to a restaurant once in a while, all that stuff. So we don't worry about it. Now we're a little worried about it, but we are realizing that maybe there are some loopholes in our system. Maybe there are some things that we need to investigate. Um, our feed right here, of course, we feed all of our own animals. And while they're on our pasture, you know, six, seven months out of the year, we've got to feed them hay. For part of the year, we don't raise hay. We're not hay farmers. We buy it. We try to source it well, but it's not certified organic. It's hard to find certified organic in our area, and it's expensive. If I can find it, I may decide that's the route I've got to go from now on. But I'm generally trying to source from people that I believe are not spraying it. Um, they're stewarding the land well, and we do the best we can. It's turning out, I'm wondering if that is good enough. So another possible loophole in our system is grains. Now, we don't feed grain heavy. We don't feed it to any of our ruminants, and that's the chief part of our diet. But our pigs do get a little bit of grain, and our chickens get grain, particularly our broilers, our meat chickens. We work to buy a well-sourced grain that are, is non-GMO, so it has no corn in it. It's very hard to get um, organic corn anywhere in our area, and that it's, that it's raised and stewarded well. Now, it's not certified organic. Again, that's hard to get for us at the volume that we need it in, and it's expensive. So until this point, we have stayed away from it, but it's now a question mark for us in our feeding paradigm, is the grain tainted? And here's the thing with glyphosate. They have now started to spray it on certain grains to dry them out. So it's not just for broadleaf weed suppression, it's now being used in a lot of different applications. And so we've learned that our grains are a possible source, even if we know the growers are only spraying when they have to, or these different things that people do to try to minimize the impact, but aren't necessarily organic. That's something we're gonna have to look into. So another possible source, is the garden. I hope not. This is our piece of ground for growing the vast bulk of our vegetables and it's going to be a hard thing to get out if it's in there. But we've got to understand that it's possible. While I produce all of our compost on site, that compost is made up at a source of wood chips for bedding for the animals and that that almost certainly wouldn't be it, but going back to the feed, we're feeding those animals. They're doing their thing in the barn, leaving us their waste, and that's residual from the food that they're eating. So if there is something in the food that they're eating, it's getting through to the compost, and it's possibly getting into our garden, or possibly there's something here that was here before we got here. And we've been here for five years. We have seen a few things that have made us question, but we've never tested the soil for anything like glyphosate before. Maybe that's an issue as well, I don't know. We're gonna have to find out. One other possible source that we've identified is our water. And oh my goodness, I hope it's not the water. That would be probably the hardest of all to cure. We live in a wonderful watershed. We have no contaminants. It's nothing but forest above us. All the water originates on our ground. There's no industrial agriculture. There's no use of anything above our watershed. 
I hope it's not here. That, that would be dramatic. One of the reasons we bought this property was for the abundant water supply that it has, and I'm so, so thankful for it. But we're gonna track this down and find out. So uh, we're gonna be looking into the water as well. So some of you may be wondering, what's the big deal? What's the problem with glyphosate? Some of you may be saying, hey, this isn't really a problem. I've read that glyphosate is safer than table salt. Maybe, I don't know. What I know is that it's a weed killer. It's a toxin, it's a carcinogen, it's poisonous. And I don't want it in my system. I don't want it in my wife's system and I don't want it in my kids' systems. Even if the short-term effects are maybe proven, and I don't even proven is a good word to not be very bad, the long-term effects are unknown, it's probably associated with cancer, not to mention a host of any other things. So this is a problem to us, and it's a problem to us because it's so high in our system. Unfortunately, studies show that glyphosate is now in 90% of the population. That's a bummer to me. I don't think that should be the case, but it is what it is. But it really shouldn't be the case for those of us that are trying to live a clean life and remove as many of the toxins as possible and particularly a life that is trying to remove herbicides, pesticides, fungicides. We don't exist with these things. We don't believe they should be in our system at this level. We're on a journey to discover why this is here for a family that works so hard to minimize our exposure to these kinds of toxins and what can we do about it. Keep your eyes open for new videos coming out as I'm gonna take you on the journey as we do the testing to figure out where this is coming from and what we can do about it.